Cloris Leachman, television's most famous Phyllis, has entered the cable world with a new production of Twigs, a play in which she ages 40 years between acts. Jean Marsh, after her acclaimed performance in the British series Upstairs, Downstairs, she's now entering the American weekly television arena as a regular on 9 to 5. Talma Hopkins, after Tony Orlando and Dawn and a regular stint on TV's Bosom Buddies, she's returning to her music. Matt Houston's John Apria. These are Mike's guests along with the entertainment news from Sandy Kenyon. And it's all coming up. From Hollywood, it's Mike Douglas, People Now. Now, here's Mike. Thank you very much, Dennis. You know, perhaps known to American audience for her portrayal of uh, Rose, the dedicated uh, house servant to the Bellamy family in the highly acclaimed PBS series, Upstairs, Downstairs, our next guest makes her American commercial debut in 9 to 5. Here's Jean Marsh. Hello. Hi, how are you? I haven't seen you for quite a spell. No, I haven't seen you since you were in Philadelphia. Yeah. But I, ha I have been working, even though you haven't I seen me. I keep seeing you, so I know you're busy. <laughs> yes, yes, I have. Nine been to working. five. I don't. Uh, how, how did they ever trap you into a series like this? And well, um, it must have made it very interesting for Jean Marsh. It, it was interesting. They, uh, it. It came about in a very normal way. You know, normally when you're an actor, you're cast because they see you in a cafe or something odd. Uh, I was just suggested by the casting woman, and they called me up. I, I was on my way to England from New York, and they said, will you fly out here and um, read for us? And I said, well, I don't know. Send me a script, and I'll see. They said, well, we want you to come this afternoon. So they sent me a, a script, and I read it, and I got on the plane. Now how did they do that? They messenger it over to you? Yes. Yes. What a oh, wonderful it's, it's jet a, age in yes. which we live. And I was on a jet that afternoon. Yes. You know, Upstairs Downstairs was uh, such a smashing success. And you say it opened a lot of doors for you, too. Oh, yes. I, I mean, it really changed my theatrical life because until Upstairs Downstairs, I'd just been climbing up the theatrical ladder really slowly. And sometimes, you know, when you take three steps up and two steps back, uh -huh. uh, I, I thought, oh, I'm just going to be one of these. Teetering. Yes, middle of the road is never quite getting there. And I certainly didn't think that Upstairs Downstairs would do it for me, but... Uh, do you, did you expect it to be such a big hit? No, oh no, no, no. Um, when I wrote the idea down, I thought, I did think it was a good idea. And when they made it, I sensed that it was very good. But you know what it's like, Mike. Of I mean, you, it can be very good and not be successful. So I was stunned. I mean, I was absolutely stunned. And when it was successful here, uh, I actually had a car crash because of it. I was in, in my car driving on my way to the country, and a friend was reading um, Time magazine, mm -hmm. and he said, wow, he said, Upstairs Downstairs has got a sensational review. I said, I don't suppose it mentions me. He says, yeah, he says, you're the best in it. <laughs> and I drove into Shoot. the back of a truck. <laughs> oh, fine. Yeah. But it was worth it. It was, yes. Just a dented fender. You know, the English are responsible for a great majority of excellent PBS programming that we mm. see in this country. Now, do the British appreciate it as much as we do? Well, yes. Um, or do they kind of take it for granted more than no, we do? No, no, I, th I think they do appreciate it. But, you know, we make a lot of rubbish as well. Um, yeah, there, I'm glad to hear you say oh, that. You, you just see, no. you see what I call our middle-of-the-road stuff. You don't see our very great plays because we, st all our good writers don't just write for film or uh, books or the theatre. They write for television as well. So you, you don't often see our big, important plays and you don't see our rubbish. You see our middle-of-the-road stuff. And yes, it, the English appreciate it. Upstairs, Downstairs was nearly always number one in the uh, ratings there. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I find it interesting when I go to England, uh, I love to go and see plays. Yes, the theatre is wonderful. And then yeah. you, you, you come back and you say, I saw an actor there, uh, that is, and you mention his name, and say, oh, he's done some films. <laughs> you know, you feel like, oh, I discovered this person. You know? oh. No, that's another thing that's different, that all actors in England work in all medium. 
and uh, just because you've starred in a film doesn't mean to say that you wouldn't play a small part on television. Like both Olivier and Gail Good have played small parts on television as well as being great stars. Their the training, movies. your training is different though. Oh, I don't know. I think um, we get a bit more experience quicker than American actors do because the big difference really is that in England you can live in London or around London and work in film, television and radio and, uh, you're, and you're cast out of London. Whereas in America an actor has to choose whether he's going to live in Los Angeles or New York. So it means that there's a lot of work. Whatever decision you make, have, there's a lot of work you're not going to do. Have you worked with both the rubbish and, and, the, and, the, and the classy stuff? Oh, yes. Have you? <laughs> you see, yes, but that's I've done part. Fast, you know. But that's yes. part of what's wonderful. Yes. Lynn Redgrave, yesterday yesterday said uh, that, you know, ups and downs, ups and downs, and she was one person, even being from that famous family, who was not afraid to take a step back, as you described. Oh, no, I, and you do must something. work. Of course. You see, if you think that you're a star and, and you're only going to do starring roles, starring roles sometimes only come once a year, if that. Now, if you only work once a year, you're not going to be any good. The your ed juices edge are is going to go mm, on. Absolutely. You need to practice. Just like you now, would, wouldn't you feel a little apprehensive if you didn't do this for a year or so? If I do this, if I get away from this for a couple of weeks, yes. I come back and I'm like a beat away. Yeah, and a little nervy. Yes. And it's like trying to find the floor. Yeah. I mean, you keep trying to I put understand. your foot down. Yes, you need to work consistently. Why are English actors so respected here? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's snobbishness. <laughs> we respect American actors in who? England. Who do you respect? Uh, I think the most popular American actor in England is Marlon Brando. Yeah. Uh, and has been for years. He's marvelous. Uh, I know... Uh, what is special about him, Jean? Please tell me. Well, I don't think he's as much an actor actually as he is um, a personality yeah um he's so good at being um himself and not many actors are also, that's what makes film stars really more than actors people who are very good at being themselves you know uh, i think it was glenda jackson one time i i did a bit in her one of her movies where i had to interview her i remember yes um uh, nasty, nasty habits. habits and she yes. said and i said i wish i could do something that's more demands more uh, acting ability. She said, I beg your pardon, what you're doing is the toughest. Being yourself, being yourself, playing yourself is very difficult. I never thought about that. Oh, it's very hard. And to be yourself and actually get through the camera so that people like you. Yes. I mean, I'm, I always play in disguise. So uh, I don't have to be that nervous. I can be shy behind my disguise, but you can't. Mm -hmm. You have to be yourself and maybe a little bit more and so get through the camera. And nobody knows what it is that makes somebody go through the lens and come up and register. Mm -hmm. And register. Nobody knows what it is. You can't learn it. Let's take a look at, uh, at Jean Marsh playing the sometimes nasty Roz on 9 to 5, yes. and then we'll talk about it. Would you roll it, Terry, please? That's oh, wonderful. I love doing I love takes. takes. I, I really like either going very fast in comedy or taking your time and milking it. I mean, I've been known to do a four, not a triple take, but a quadruple take and, and make <laughs> it pay off. Now, a double take would be. Yes. Right? And a triple mm. take would be. But a quadruple. Oh, you'd, be, you'd be falling off your chair. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have to leave, but thank yeah. you so much for coming by. And oh, it was a pleasure. And continued success to you. In thank nine, you. Nine I hope you'll invite me back. Seven, oh, definitely. <laughs> Seven, seventh in the yes, ratings? Yes. Oh, was that nice. It's very good, yes. Right. Gene Marsh from 9 to 5. And we'll visit in a moment with Cloris Leachman right after this.